Good morning, everyone. This is Julie McDonald with Microcom Technologies, and I would like to thank all of you for attending today's webinar with SMC Networks. Today's host is Jack Sue, and he'll be presenting today. If anyone has any questions, feel free to submit them in the question box, and Jack will answer them at the end of the presentation. Um, thank you, everyone, again. And Jack, you are now ready to go. The floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, hi, so uh, my name is Jack and I'm with Edge Core Networks. Um, I'm the uh, sales engineer. Um, I know the uh, presentation says SMC Networks, but um, we actually, I'm actually with Edge Core Networks and SMC uh, is technically what one of our power lines, uh, how we used to uh, segregate the SMB and Soho from our enterprise and um, like medium small business lines. So uh, we still carry the SMC, but uh, they're basically uh, our Soho uh, power line. And then uh, starting with the um, uh, SMB and Enterprise, uh, we brand them under our Edge Core uh, brand name. So um, let me go ahead and get started. So today I'll go over our, uh, our managed switch uh, series, and then uh, the bulk of the presentation will be uh, focused on our uh, new ECS 2100 series, which is our Web Smart Pro series that replaced our old SMC GS um, Web, series, Web Smart series. So um, we didn't really release any new products under our N Manage Switch series. So um, as of today, we still have our SMC FS501801, which are our 10100 uh, managed uh, switch. Um, for our gigabit uh, series, we have the SMC GS501801. And then uh, 1610 and 2410. So it's our 5 port, 8 port, 16 port, and 24 port uh, unmanaged uh, gigabit switches. For our PoE line, uh, we still have the SMC 801P, which is our 8 port, uh, 10100 uh, unmanaged switch with 120 watts of PoE budget. Our FS 1601P, which is our 16 port version with 200 watt of PoE budget. For gigabit, we have the SMC GS801P, also a port, uh, 105 watts of PoE budget. And the SMC GS1601P, uh, 16 port, uh, 200 watt PoE budget. So uh, nothing really has changed in our uh, unmanaged switch lines. Um, we did uh, phase out a few models, but most of the models are still um, active. Uh, okay, so um, so starting uh, earlier this year, we released the ECS 2100 Westmars uh, Pro Series. Um, this series has replaced our uh, our older SMC uh, GS West uh, Westmars Series, um, and uh, we have made uh, several changes to the product line. Um, so starting uh, with, we have added a dedicated management port to our uh, to our switches. So. Unlike the, um, the SMC series, which is only uh, managed via the web GUI um, and also uh, Telnet on the uh, higher port density uh, switches, um, the ES100 series are all um, managed. We have a conflict point on every switch. Um, and we also uh, offer um, management via uh, web GUI, uh, SSH, and Telnet. Um, we have a variety of uh, configuration uh, from eight ports to 52 ports. Uh, we actually have uh, one of the uh, switches that's coming out uh, later this year. We actually have uh, two 10 gig SFP plus uplink. So um, usually the designs only come with one gig SFP, but we also released a model this year that will have a uh, two 10 gig uplinks for uh, greater uh, capacity. Um, with the phase two firmware that will be released, uh, I believe um, September, October uh, this year, uh, the ECS 1200 series will also su support static route. So um, you can actually create uh, multiple subnets and, uh, and create a route routing between each one. Um, this series of switches, uh, if you're familiar with the Cisco uh, switches, uh, is very similar to the SG300 series. Um, so let me go over the uh, different configuration we have for this uh, power line. So uh, starting with the uh, ECS 2100 10T, this is our um, our 10 port, uh, actually eight uh, copper ports and two SFP ports. Uh, this is a 10 port um, managed switch. Um, and then moving now, we have the 28 port version, which is uh, 24 uh, copper with uh, four one gig SFP. And then uh, later this year, we will have the 52-port version, which is 48 copper with four uh, one gig SFP. 
And as I mentioned before, uh, we also have the, um, the 26-4 version, and this is actually 24-core uh, copper with two 10 gigs of FE uplink. For the PoE line, we actually have two versions of the 10 port. Uh, the 2100 10 PE is a, uh, uh, well, that has eight uh, copper port, uh, all PoE uh, capable. Uh, we actually support uh, 802.3 uh, AT on, on all our PoE switches. Um, the, pay, the PE is uh, meant to be either wall mounted or a uh, desktop switch. Um, if you need something that can be rack mountable, we also have the ECS 2100-10P. Um, and then moving up, we have the 28P and also the 28PP, which is uh, uh, which is available, uh, which is uh, um, which you can actually extend the PoE budget via a, um, a separate um, uh, external power device. And I'll go over that in a later slide. So. Um, the 10T, so as I mentioned, this is just a 10-port uh, uh, non-PoE switch. It's uh, fanless, um, and for all our 10-port um, devices, um, it has um, 8K of uh, MAC address uh, capacity, and it supports jumbo frame up to 10K. Uh, the 10P, uh, this is our 10T, um, the 8-port uh, <clears throat> uh, PoE with two SFP uplink. Uh, this is the uh, <coughs> The tempo switch, uh, PoE switch, uh, not the uh, not the uh, wall mount one. This is the rack mountable one. Uh, this one has uh, also um, 8K of MAC address capacity and 10K jumbo frame support. The PoE budget for this switch is 125 watts and it supports 802.3 AF and AT. The 10PE is the wall mountable version of the tempo switch. Um, Unlike the other switches, uh, this one actually has an external power adapter, so a, a wall ward uh, power adapter. So it's meant to be a slim and low profile. Um, it all comes with the wall mount um, gear included in the box, and it's meant for either wall mount or um, on top of desk uh, placement. And like the other switches, it also has 8K of uh, MAC address and 10, 10K jumbo frame support. The PoE budget for this switch, because it is, it is a wall where not an internal power supply like the other switches, um, the PoE budget is only 65 watts and is 802.3 AF and AT compatible. And this is the uh, ECS 2080. This is our 24 uh, non PoE switch, so 24 uh, 1 gig RJ45 with uh, 4 1 gig SFP uh, uplink. Um, this switch is also uh, fanless. Uh, MAC address is also 8K and 10K uh, jumbo frame. Uh, this is the uh, the PoE version of that switch. Um, the power budget for this switch is 200 watts. Um, and also able to that three AF and AT. Um, if you need more power budget, uh, you want to look at our 28 PP version, which I'll go over in the next slide. So this is the 2100 28 PP. Um, unlike the uh, 28 P, this one actually has a um, a um, expansion port uh, for connection to the external PSU that will be allow, allow the um, PoE budget to expand from 370 watts to 740 watts. And at 740 watts, you can basically uh, power um, every port on the switch will be able to, to deliver up to 30 watts per port, basically the maximum allowed under the 802.3 AT standard. Um, the MAC address and uh, jumbo frame is still 8K and 10K, uh, respect to, uh, with <clears throat> Successfully, and then the uh, the switch also has it's a fan. Uh, it's not fanless. So, um, as I mentioned before, the 28 PP uh, is able to expand its PoE budget via a uh, external PSU. So the PS3000 is a uh, what we call a power shelf. So, as you can see in the picture below, it's basically a, uh, a 19 inch uh, or chassis with three expansion slots. So each of the extension slots, uh, you're able to basically connect one of the um, external PSU on the picture on the right here into each of these slots. And the idea is that uh, a power shelf with a fully, power sh uh, a fully loaded power shelf with three PSU, uh, you can actually connect three of the, um, the 2128PP uh, to um, the power shelf, and all three switches will be able to uh, offer 740 watts of PLA power. So um, this basically allows you to power um, 
uh, every device or every port to be deliver 30 watts of power. Um, and it's very, it's very uh, fixed and something because rather than having um, an individual RPU for each switch, you just you can actually support three switches in, with just one, um, one chassis versus um, one for each one. So um, this is actually available now um, if you if anyone's interested in this. Uh, let's see here. So the common features. So the uh, 2100 series is uh, fully loaded in terms of features. Um, for layer two, it supports all the, uh, the standard features you expect on layer two managed switch. So uh, fanning tree, um, the port, uh, VLANs. Um, we can support to 4,000 VLANs uh, simultaneously. Um, link aggregation, so LSCP or static trunk, um, IGMP snooping, um, so uh, green savings, so 802.3, um, I think H, I think. Uh, so jumper frame uh, up to 10K for uh, for all the uh, switches in the series. Uh, we offer a QoS support, um, there's eight Qs. Um, for management, we support SNMP uh, version one, two, and three. We also offer the uh, private MIB, so for further um, management. Um, DHCP relay, uh, DHCP snooping are both supported. Um, I believe we also support um, dynamic RD inspections as well. So um, in terms of feature, this switch is actually very, uh, uh, very well loaded. Um, and like I mentioned before, starting in September or October, we also um, include uh, static routes. So this switch will be able to do a uh, layer three routing, um, uh, something that you usually find on the more expensive switch. Uh, security, uh, DDoS protection, CPU guard, poor isolation. Uh, we also have um, R span as well as port monitoring, um, SSH uh, support, telnet support, um, S flow also will be supported. Um, I think it's supported. Um, I think the the timeline has been shifted to I believe. Uh, September, October as well. So um, S4 will be supported on this switch as well. And uh, at this point, uh, I'll answer any questions if anyone has any. So let me look at the. Hi, Jack. Um, yes, yeah. um, there are a couple questions. Um, sure. Is there a release date for the 48 ECS 2100? Oh uh, yeah, so I believe the um, the the release date will be sometime in October. They're doing the uh, the final testing now, and I believe they'll go into mass production in in October this year. Excellent. And I've got a question number two for you. Let's see, um, what vendor is your biggest competitor or similar line uh, in which you sell? Um, I think the 2100 series was actually at the closest, like I uh, mentioned earlier, it's the part of Cisco SG300. Um, the SG300 uh, pretty much has uh, identical um, like uh, specs as our 2100 series. It's just that their product is a little more um, complicated because I, I think I've, I've seen them sell uh, AF version and also AT version like, in terms of POE power. So they have an AO2.3 um, I'm sorry, uh, AF switch, so I think it's like something like 10P, and then they'll have a 10PP version, which is the 802.3 AT. For us, which is ORPOE um, switches, we offer 802.3 AT support. So there's actually uh, less, um, I guess, less uh, models available. Um, and then I uh, also, uh, the, um, the Cisco line also supports static route, which is something that we are offering uh, later this year. So once we have that feature, um, the feature-wise comparison between the Cisco SG300 and our 200 series will be very close. Okay, thank you. Um, can you tell me about the products that you spoke about today? Are they rack mountable? Uh, yes. Uh, I believe. Let me see. The 2100 series, aside from the um, the uh, the uh, 2100-10PE, that one is wall mountable, but everything else is rack mountable. For the unmanaged switches, um, aside from the, the smaller switches, the um, like the FS801, 501, um, all the higher density, basically 16 port and up uh, unmanaged uh, non-POE are rack mountable. And then for the POE switches, all of them are rack mountable. 
Uh, thank you. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, uh, manufacturing um, these products? Give us a, a, maybe an overview about it. Um, so we actually have a factory that um, that uh, basically we manage our switches. Um, for most part, they're manufactured in China in our uh, Shenzhen factory. Uh, great, thank you very much. Um, uh, I think that could be the end of our, our Q&A session. Um, unless any more questions pop in, I think that's it for, for the time being. Um, but anyway, thank you so much for answering those questions. Uh, and thanks everyone for attending today. Um, if anyone does, you know, come up with more questions, feel free to contact your sales rep or email us at sales at microcomtech.com. And if you wish to view any of the products uh, mentioned and shown today, please visit us at www.microcom.us or contact your sales rep as well. Uh, please remember this webinar presentation was recorded and it will be uploaded to our Microcom YouTube channel. Uh, so if you'd like to reference it again, you can certainly view it again on YouTube. Thanks again, everybody. Appreciate your uh, attendance. And thank you, Jack, very much for your presentation. And I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you.